from actual erotic um, Roman coins to the very awesome colony coins in the 1900s, or just the 1800s and 1900s, we take a look at 10 of the curious coins and coin tokens from history. Number 10. Now, this is called the Spintria coins. These were also known as erotic Roman coins minted with bronze or brass in the early 1st century. One side depicted a sexual act, while the other side depicted a Roman number from 1 to, I don't know, probably 16 of that. So, because, well, I don't really know about Roman history, specifically in coins, just so you know, right? The most common theory suggests they were used for a mission into b brothels. The picture side depicted the pleasures for on an offer, and the number side stated the chamber where these pleasures were to be proven. Alternatively, the numeral could depict the price of the sexual act, eliminating language barriers. Spintry were instead used, used instead of ordinary coins to circumvent the law that bringing currency bearing the emperor's image into a brothel was treason. However, some claim that it's unlikely that spiritry were used as brothel tokens or for numerous reasons, such as their appearance in bathe houses, but never in the rooms of actual brothels. Perhaps they were tokens in the game whose rules are unknown to us. Number 9. The Angel Coin. From the mid Middle Ages to the early 1700s, it was believed that scrofia, a disease of the left nodes, could be treated, and sometimes even cured, by a monarch touching the infection. Of course, monarchs didn't actually want to touch victims of the disease. Thus was born the alternative practice of a monarch touching a gold coin that could be later pressed to the infected area. Coins are became known as touch pieces. Gold coins, known as an angel, were the most typical choice. The reverse side of an angel coin depicted the archangel Michael standing over a defeated Satan, symbolizing the triumph of good over evil. In 1714, George I, who regarded touch pieces as a Catholic superstition, abolished the ceremony. Number 8. Leiden Hearts Leiden Hearts were love tokens crafted by British convicts, moved to Australia and Tasmania during the late 1700s and early 1800s. Most sentences were to last 7 to 14 years, so convicts wanted to leave some sort of forget-me-not to, lo to their loved ones. Leiden Hearts were made by some smooth in a coin on one or both sides. The coin was then engraved with a message of affection meant for the convict's loved ones. The engraving work was done by a series of small pin pricks and often include the names of the convict and their loved one, the length of separation, as well as phrases and rhymes of, of separation. Number 7. Hobo Nichols. Coins have always been favored as an art artistic medium. In 1913, for example, the Buffalo Nickel became extremely popular among coin carvers. It, produced, uh, it provided a larger and thicker canvas to work on than before, so more detailed pieces could be created. Buffalo Nickels were also cheaper to work on than quarters. Carving and selling Buffalo Nickels became a common occupation within the transient community and was an especially useful means of extra income during the Great Depression. The carved buffalo nickels became known as hobo nickels due to the widespread belief that hobos started carving on them on long train rides. Number 6. The Hard Times Tokens Hard Times Tokens were minted privately from 1832 to 1844 as unofficial currency, meant to Elevate the shortage of coins during the American Economic Depression of 1837 to 1844. They were divided into three main categories. The first consisted of political propaganda, mostly for and against Andrew Jackson and his vice president, Martin Van Buren. For example, one quoted Van Buren's inaugural speech as, I will follow in the footsteps of my illustrious predecessor and between a running donkey 
represent Jackson, leaving hoof prints behind. The second category of higher time tokens consists of store tokens featuring advertisements. The third were set look outlets. Practically all were similar in size and composition to the large sets that they were meant to re replace. Number five, church pennies. During the 18th and 19th centuries, some churches in the northeastern part of America commissioned special coin tokens to be used in churches only. These were issued to stop counterfeit copper coins as well as extremely worn coins from getting into the collection plates. Once the church had bought these tokens, it would it would sell them onto parishioners who could then donate them without the fear of upsetting the church. The first Presbyterian Church of Albany, for example, issued 1,000 such tokens in early 1790. Each was engraved with the circle of scallops and the motto Church Penny. The reverse side of the coin was obviously blank. Number 4. French Trisians. Trisians were 13 coins carved specifically for marriage in France around the 1500s and possibly earlier. Even though carved with symbols of love such as double flame and hearts and handshakes, they were considered legitimate currency by merchants. The groom gave the bride Trisians as symb symbolic compensation for the goods or the land she bought to the Union. During the wedding, the Trisians were blessed by a Catholic priest. The total number of the coins represented Jesus and his twelve apostles. Between one to three coins were given to the priest, while the others were meant to be kept as a keepsake by the newly wed couple. However, they were almost always spent in times of hardship. Number three, the holy dollar. Almost immediately after the colony of New South Wales was found in 1788, it ran into coinage difficulties. Foreign coins were common, but the majority left the colony through trade. Lachlan of the Quarry, the governor of the new colony, soon came up with a creative solution. Simply just put a freak and hold in a coin. In 1812, he imported 40,000 Spanish reels and had the convicted foreigner, forger William Henshaw, cut out the center of each. The result? Both doubled the number of coins available and prevented their export. The coins were counterstamped and brought into circulation in 1814. Eventually, the outer ring came to be known as the Holy Dollar and the center as the Domb. In 1822, they were replaced with sterling coinage. Number 2. Saudi Arabian Bullion Coins Now, these types of coins were minted in Philadelphia by the U U.S. Mint in 1945 and 1947. At the time, the Arabian American Oil Company, Aramco, was set up in Saudi Arabia by four American oil companies. Each year, Aramco had to pay around $3 million in royalties to the Saudi government. The contract specified that the payment had to be made in gold. At the time, the dollar was governed by a gold standard. And for some time, the Saudis accept payment in the United States currency. However, in 1945, however, they insisted for payments in gold. Armco faced with the prospect of either a cutoff of much of Middle Eastern oil or the increase in the price of oil turned to the United States government for help. As a solution, the American government minted around 91,210 large gold discs bearing the Great Seals Eagles. The Saudi Arabian bullion coins thus looked like coins, and they were used as coins. Yet they weren't technically coins. The coins were shipped off to Saudi Arabia, and most were late, and most were later melted down into bullion. Number one, leper colony coins. Back in the day, leprosy was believed to be contagious and one of the most feared diseases in the world. Victims were often forced to leave their homes and spend the rest of their lives in colonies, known as lazarettos. These isolated sanitariums surrounded hospitals for contagious diseases, but people still feared that leprosy could be transmitted through money, so special currency was developed specifically for leper colonies. Leper colony coins started in early 20th century Colombia, and then spread to other countries and regions such as the Philippines, Japan, and Panama. At some point, these special leper 
leper coins also existed in Brazil, China, Costa Rica, Korea, Nigeria, Thailand, and Venezuela. Anyway, think so what do you think? What is your favorite coin? If you if you know, you could just say it to yourself. Let us know in the comment section down below. So that way you can guys give us another top 10 for us to do. We are encouraging you guys to do it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos every day. Um, that's another thing that we do. Also, give this video a like and let us know in the comments, like I said. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.